For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another video on X Factors and Superstar abilities. I'm going to do an updated video on a video that I put out a couple months ago because I noticed that that video really performed well over time. So, in today's video, I'm going to give you a new take on what I think are the best X Factors and Superstar abilities to use in every position in Madden 24, whether you're playing CFM or Mutt. Although, obviously, Mutt, there's a little bit of a difference because there's actual cost when it comes to the AP cost. But overall, I'm going to give you guys the best abilities to use regardless. So, if you guys want to see more videos like this as always please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that's going to get right into the video now i'm going to start off with the ones that i'm using on my team because you guys should know by now if you watch my channel that i'm a philadelphia eagles fan and that's the team that i'm using the most uh starting off with quarterback now jalen hurts uh doesn't have the best throw power so that might affect some of my superstar abilities but when it comes to x factors i like to use truz to start and that's because it's so easy to unlock you only have to rush for one plus yards i'm not even sure how many times you got to do it but i don't really run around a lot with my quarterback but ultimately if i do i want to be in a situation where i'm not going to fumble the ball if i try to extend a play and turn a, a small play into a big play which to me is really uh you know it's more value than anything it's not one of the better x factors but i like the value of it the best x factors in this are probably going to be things like bazooka especially for a quarterback like jalen hurts who doesn't really have that great of an arm or omaha which is something that i mentioned in the last video where essentially uh you can see the entire defense but I find that this is something that doesn't always, um, you know, it says you can't throw any incompletions, which can be a little difficult to, uh, to unlock in a game, which is why, like I said, the easiest one to unlock is Truss. Another really good one, though, is Escape Artist. If you have a quarterback that um, can scramble for 10 plus yards, this is a very good ability to have. It'll get you out of a lot of trouble. And this is something that I also use from time to time. Uh, there really is only one more that I would suggest when it comes to quarterbacks, and that would probably be Dots. Because obviously you want to have um, perfect pass accuracy to all throws. So when you unlock dots, all passes are throwing perfect accuracy. And this is a pretty easy one to do as well with consecutive passes of 5 plus yards in the air. Not too difficult to get. That's one of the things you have to take into account when it comes to these things. You want to see how difficult is it to unlock these. And these are all pretty simple. Run and gun isn't too bad either. But there's something in the superstar abilities area that makes that uh, kind of obsolete. And that is Dashing Deadeye, which is something I typically like to keep on my quarterback out of, as one of my five superstar abilities. As you can see, this here gives you uh, perfect accuracy when throwing on the run outside of the pocket. And truthfully, you're not typically running inside of the pocket. So it really doesn't make a whole a lot of sense, the, the one in the, uh, the X Factor that I just went over, considering that you're never really going to be running inside the pocket. This is something where if you're stretching a play out, trying to get away from a defender, you'll typically be outside the pocket anyway, and you'll typically be throwing the ball under 40 yards. So to me, Dashing Deadeye is one of the better superstar abilities. Another one I use is Sideline Deadeye, and that's because I want perfect accuracy to the sideline. I can't tell you how many times... I would throw a ball to uh, you know a tight corner of the end zone or a tight corner by the sideline, and it just goes out of bounds and the receiver can't make a play. So having sideline dead eye is really important to me. That's probably one of the better ones. Gunslinger obviously is very important because you have faster passing speed and you release the ball quicker, but there are some backup options I'm going to show you guys in a second. Hot Route Master is something I recently started using. I don't like using it in my videos because obviously if you're if I'm trying to show an offense and I use Hot Route Master too much, there's going to be a lot of people in my audience that don't use Hot Route Master so they can't use that. But I do find in my CFM the Hot Route Master is huge and it's really important. And then last but not least, like I said, Jalen Hurts doesn't have a ton of throw power, so I like to use Pass Lead Elite because this this will increase throw power on bullet passes, which is very important if you have a quarterback that doesn't have a very strong arm like Jalen Hurts does not. Now, there are a couple more in here that I want to discuss that I really like. Uh, things like Fearless. This is something that I think is pretty good depending on what quarterback you have as it'll make you immune to throw penalty pressure. And that's something that a lot of people, um, you know, can create in this game, especially if you're going against a team that has a lot of X factor abilities and a lot of superstar abilities. This can really help when it comes to taking away uh, those abilities. I also like threat detector, but you can unlock this on linemen. So I'll go over that in a little bit. But if you don't have alignment with that, threat detector is really important because a lot of times it can make third or fourth down really easy to convert based on the fact that you know where the blitz is coming from. And a lot of of times you can just throw over that blitz so that's very important to me as well 
Uh, another one that I like to use quite a bit is protected. Uh, this is really good if you don't have a very good offensive line, if you're not very good at reading your offensive line, because this will make the, this will basically make your entire offensive line block better. So obviously, like I said, you can't put all these in one, but I like a lot of these, and a lot of times I'll switch them in and out depending on what team or what player I'm using. I also like to use conductor a lot, especially if I'm using uh, a lot of hot routes or I'm running a lot of hurry up, which is something that I like to do because it really gets you an advantage. So conductor is something that I really like, but once again, like I said, I have this set up based off of the quarterback that I'm using, and I don't really, uh, I can't fit them all in. The last one would be quick draw. It says pass with disability uh, have faster passing animations when they're throwing under pressure, which is pretty similar. You know, if you don't have uh, Gunslinger unlocked, this is something that you can use in its place, uh, which a lot of these are really things that you can use in the place of something else. Next up, I'm going to go over running backs. When it comes to Superstar X Factor abilities, I don't feel like running back really has a great one. So I go with Truz once again because it's very easy to unlock and I want to make sure that I don't fumble. But if I were to pick a second one, I'd probably say first one free because it increases your fake out rate on the next juke, spin, or hurdle but I feel like I can do that on my own anyway. After that, when it comes to superstar abilities, which I feel are ultimately better anyway because you have them the entire game, I would say evasive is probably number one if you can unlock that. Uh, if you can't, you, if you don't have that, jukebox is very good as well, but this will give you basically the exact same thing on jukes and spins. Uh, so to me, it's obviously the better of the two. I also have human joystick, as this will basically allow you to keep speed while changing direction and uh, shifting momentum and stuff like that. So this is very important to make sure that your running back is as sticky as possible. Uh, the next most important thing to me is energizer, which is something that I recently started using. And this is because if you're gonna make a bunch of uh, ball carrier moves during a play, um, you're going to run out of stamina before you get anywhere. So if you have Energizer, this is going to basically replenish your stamina throughout the course of the play to the point where every time you perform a, uh, a successful spin or a juke, your guy's just going to stay fresh. He's going to stay fast throughout the entire play, which can be a problem if you're if you're breaking a big run, but you're running out of stamina. So this is very important for, uh, for ball carriers. And then last but not least, I have goal line back, but this is one that I've replaced from time to time. Next up, I got two receivers on my team that have superstar X Factor abilities, and I use the exact same setup on both of them. And that is, for X Factor, I like to use Yak em Up. Now, Yak em Up will basically, um, you know, when you enter the zone, you're, you're nearly guaranteed to break the first tackle post catch, which can obviously be the difference between a touchdown and just a big play. So that's why, to me, this is very important because if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation and somebody tries to tackle you, you keep running, that can be a very easy touchdown. So I like that. But at the same time, double me is very important as this will give you the ability to basically just go up and moss people uh, unless you're double covered, which a lot of people don't typically do. And this is this is basically going to increase your success rate on aggressive catches against single coverage when most people aren't double covered. When it comes to superstar abilities, I use grab and go because obviously once you catch the ball on a rack catch, you're trying to turn that into a bigger play. And this will give you the ability, much like the running back uh, one that I went over, where you can basically just you know turn up field without losing speed and make people miss and stuff like that. I think that that's very important. I also like to use route technician. This is probably the most important because whenever you're, uh, you know, when your receiver's cutting, he's going to get open. He's going to create more separation, especially against man coverage and stuff like that. So to me, route technician is probably one of the most important ones. I also like to use honorary lineman because if you're going to run the ball a lot, you're going to really see the benefit of guys that can block on the edge, especially because corners in the most for the most part have a hard time block shedding. They don't have very high block shed. So if you have honorary linemen on one or two receivers, which my Mutt players probably know all about right now, considering that's kind of the the meta, uh, that and Vanguard, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So to me, I've been using I've been on the honorary linemen uh, since the last video I put out about three months ago. So to me, honorary linemen's always been a great thing to have. Uh, and people are now just finding out. Hopefully it's because of the video that I put out, but who knows. I also like to use short out elite because there's a lot of really important routes. If you're trying to get just a couple of yards or you're trying to get, um, you're, you're trying to turn something sh a short yards play into, into a, a bigger yards play, having short out elite is going to be great, especially if you're, going, if you're running things like speed out routes, uh, maybe just simple out routes are going to be very important. All these things are outside the line of scrimmage. And if you can create more separation doing that, you know, you're going to be better off for it. Now, there are a couple of other good ones here that I want to mention, things like red zone threat. Obviously, once again, it's just like the running back. When you're inside the red zone, it's more important to be successful in that area than anywhere else. So to have something that will basically give you uh, win contested catches in that area is going to be huge. Um, if you don't have Hot Route Master like I have, Route Apprentice is very good, uh, but obviously I already have that. And then the last one, similar to uh, Honorary Lineman, is Runoff Elite, uh, which basically, if you don't know what a runoff is, runoff is when the receivers run fake routes, especially against man coverage. Uh, it will pull the defender back 
to the point where it might take them a little while, the cornerbacks, to realize that, hey, this isn't a pass play. This is a run play. i got to go down and make a tackle. And run off the lead will basically hold them longer, making it easier to run outside on plays like stretches and stuff like that. So this is also very good, uh, which is something that I mentioned in my previous video as well. Now, when it comes to tight ends, I don't personally have a superstar X-Factor tight end right now, but I would use the same ones that I was telling you about. Either rack them up, double me, or Vanguard, which is something that my Mutt players know all about right now. When it comes to superstar abilities, I mean, I used a lot of the same ones personally. Things like Route Technician, if you have that unlocked. Uh, Matchup Nightmare is really good if you like to run the ball a lot because it's going to force your opponent to bulk up and come out in a lot of uh, defenses that have linebackers. And then this will basically make sure that they, they beat those linebackers. Other than that, once again, if you run the ball a lot, I think it's best to probably have things that are related to running the ball. Things like All Day, uh, which to me, I kind of think of more about Pass Pro. But this will make him a much better blocker and things like Secure Protector, which is going to be similar. So if you have things like these on your tight end, if you run the ball a lot, obviously this is going to make your, your tight end block that much better and seal that edge that much better when it comes to stretch plays. Now, when it comes to linemen, uh, I mentioned when I was doing the quarterbacks how much I really like Threat Detector. But since this is something you can put on an actual lineman, it's much better to have it on your lineman if it's possible. So, like I said, this will just basically make sure that you know who's coming on a blitz. It makes third and fourth down conversions that much easier because, like I said, if you know where the pressure is coming from, it's that much easier just to throw behind it and get easy first downs. So if you know that there's you know two guys on the left that are both coming in on a blitz, just throw right over that blitz and you're going to have easy first down on third and long or you know whatever, third or fourth and long. Long. Other than that, I like Nasty Streak. This is one of the first ones um, that gets opened up. It's one of like the cheapest ones when it comes to CFM. But basically, when they get down to linebackers and defensive backs, a lot of times they'll they'll really uh, get dominant impact blocks. So when they get to that next level, that's that's really important to me um, because obviously you know that can really create larger runs uh, if they get to those second and third levels and blow those guys up. Uh, other than that, I have fooled me once because I'm not really I'm not really a fan of any of these. If you use a lot of pulling uh, type plays like tosses or um, you know trap runs and stuff like that, I think puller elite's pretty good. I do that from time to time, but I mostly run stretch runs and inside zone, so it's not really worth it to me in this current scheme that I'm running. But this is a very good option. And then once again, all day, which would probably be my favorite, which is something that I mentioned. Uh, in one of the, the, the previous positions in tight end, uh, which is very good. Although they also have secure protector here, and I probably should put that on somebody. And for tackles, if you can unlock edge protector, which I think I'm one away when it comes to this particular player, this will basically make sure that you don't uh, lose to quick block shed moves, uh, meaning that your, your pass pro will hold up that much longer. Now for defense, I like to use uh, Unstoppable Force. You only got to get a sack on the quarterback, uh, which isn't too difficult. This will increase their win rate and block shed speed against one-on-one -on -one pass blocks, uh, which means that they're obviously going to be game wreckers. also like Fearmonger, though, because this is something that's uh, really good. When they enter the zone, they can apply significant pressure on quarterbacks, even while engaged in blocks. So you can really mess up passes from a distance. Uh, which is obviously uh, really good. As far as the current abilities that I'm using, I really only want to have goal line stuff. It's similar to when I was on offense where I wanted better blocking inside the five. Well, this is going to make you uh, in, you know, disengage and shed blocks quicker inside the five, obviously making it harder to run when in the red zone because that is really important. Also under pressure, once again, it's just going to create a further distance where you can apply pressure on the quarterback and make throws um, you know, inaccurate, which can save you on a down. It can save you on a big play. Other than that, though, I got double or nothing right now, but this is not necessarily uh, what I want to have on. I'm trying to get to a point where I can either unlock uh, some of the better ones here, things like no outsiders, which you typically want to have on your defensive ends. Um, although this is something that is easy to uh, to basically neutralize by simply um, you know double teaming the edge on a stretch run will take that away. So it's not necessarily um, the most uh, you know, the most important when it comes to defensive ends. Uh, but that is something that I'm trying to unlock because a lot of people don't know that. Then you got pass committed. This one here, uh, basically, if you guess pass during a play, um, your guy's going to gonna win that much quicker. He's going to block shit that much quicker. He's going to basically, um, you know, get much quicker sacks, which is obviously really important too. But I don't have a 90 overall speed rusher unlocked yet. I'm trying to get on Nolan Smith. I'm almost there. Then you also have edge threat and edge threat elite, which these are, are very, uh, you know, edge threat elite is one of the hardest to get. As you can see, you have to be have a 95 overall power rusher, which I don't know if I'm either, ever going to get that because I think I'm, I'm, you know, with some of these players, it's very difficult. But if you can unlock these, 
It's, it basically makes them dominant edge uh, pass rushers. And for defensive tackle, I do have everything unlocked because I got Jalen Carter up to a 99 overall right now. And I use pretty much the exact same ones that I mentioned. I use Unstoppable Force. I use Pass Committed, uh, which is very important. Obviously, guessing pass would make him a, a dominant uh, pass rusher if I'm correct. Under Pressure, same thing. Uh, inside Stuff, which is similar to, um, you know, to uh, No Outsiders. But obviously for inside run plays, still very important. It's also important to have this on two defensive tackles because, once again, you can double team inside stuff and neutralize it, but you can if there's two players that have it. Other than that, you also have goal line stuff because, once again, it's very important to get those stops inside the five. And then next up, we got linebacker. Once again, I'm going back to the Niners because I don't have a linebacker with a superstar and X-Factor ability. And I don't really use linebackers in my scheme anyway because they don't jump and they're just not as good in coverage or good to users. So to me, that's something that you don't necessarily need. But if you use linebackers, I would say some of the better ones to use are Mind Reader, which is something that is basically uh, Omaha for the offense. Avalanche is very good because obviously if you're in the zone uh, and you hit stick, you're gonna res it's gonna result in a fumble if you're heading if you're running towards the line of scrimmage, uh, which is something that if you can play downhill in a run play, you can really knock out a lot of fumbles. This one here might be the better of the two, might be the best one overall because obviously getting the ball is so important. Or if you use a lot of uh, if you play a lot of zone coverages, I also find that shutdown is very good. This is something even though I don't like to use linebackers, there's a lot of really good. Um, you know, X factor abilities here uh, when it comes to uh, to linebackers and zone Hawks also very good as it'll increase the rate of interceptions while in zone coverage, obviously, which is very important. Now, when it comes to uh, superstar abilities, um, they have a couple of decent ones here. I don't know. I mean, Lurker, if you're going to use your linebacker, Lurker obviously is very important as it's just basically makes your linebacker usable as you can see you can get jumping 180 degree interceptions while lurking in the zone in the middle of the field very nice uh mid zone ko obviously linebackers are typically going to be in in uh you know hook zones and stuff like that so having a ko ability like that's going to be very good um, they're also going to be going up against running backs a lot so this is not a bad option without match but i would say the ones that i would use uh number one if you have film study on any player that's always good although i feel like this one's kind of lesser because it goes by the quarter if, if somebody's using the same play over and over in a quarter you'll see a result but it resets every quarter which isn't great i also like um, you know, lumberjack is really important when it comes to hit sticking or cut sticking. I tend to cut stick more often than not. Uh, but if you have this on the user linebacker that you're using, you'll get a lot more fumbles, which is really nice. Uh, and then other than that, there's a lot of coverage stuff, which I'm going to go over uh, more when I get to the secondary. So now we're in the secondary and I use pretty much the same abilities on both my outside cornerbacks. I run a lot of cover three. So that's going to be why I typically put deep out zone KO on my outside cornerbacks because that's where they're going to be in the most play. Basically, if somebody's trying to throw the ball 20 plus yards from the line of scrimmage and outside the hash marks, which is where deep cover three cornerbacks are going to be, you're going to get uh, more knockouts. Now, if you don't run cover three, say you run cover two or like a cover six where one of them is in a flat zone KO all the time would be a much better option. So just know what kind of system you're running uh, because that's going to be the most important when it comes to um, you know how to get the most out of your cornerbacks. If you run a lot of man coverages, you're going to want to use things like uh, you know deep route KO, uh, which I don't have one because I don't really run a lot of man coverage at all. If you're running man coverage, once again, you could use inside shade, outside shade, or the best one would be one step ahead because this is going to essentially make sure that they're running the route and they're going to be you know either getting more interceptions or making more plays on the ball. So really, just use that to match your scheme. After that, one of the better ones is Acrobat, but I don't have that unlocked yet as you'll see they'll just make some ridiculous diving swats and catches and stuff like that to get interceptions that you wouldn't normally make and since i don't have this unlocked since i'm not technically a 90 i guess overall player he's only he's a 92 because of, of his uh confidence meter or whatever that's called is up really high right now but um but yeah so at the moment since i don't have that unlocked i have things like pick artist which basically gives you a higher chance to make uncontested catches um, you know, anything interception related is always good. That or tip drill. I find tip drills better to use on a safety. Maybe a cornerback tips the ball in the air and a safety is in the area converging on the ball. Um, so to me, that's really, uh, you know, you can use that on a cornerback too, 
but I think it's just something that you can that I typically put on my safeties. In my league, you can only use two abilities on. Uh, you can't use more than uh, the same ability twice on offense or defense. So that's why I kind of got to spread around a little bit. Uh, after that, we got on the ball. I talked about when I did receivers about the elongated runoffs. Well, I want my cornerbacks to play the run better, so I have on the ball on both cornerbacks outside so that they don't get fooled by runoffs and they're quicker to make a play on those outside runs. And then last but not least, we got safeties. Once again, I told you I run cover three, so I like to use deep end zone KO because this particular player spends a lot of time in the middle of the field, and this is where I basically will have him in my defense almost all the time. I do have acrobat unlock, which I already mentioned in the cornerback section, and flat zone KO. A lot of times if the play is flipped, the same safety that would be in the deep middle third is going to be in a flat zone. So obviously I want that, uh, you know, that, uh, that dual ability when it comes to my safety. But once again, if you run cover two, you might want to have a deep out zone KO on both sides of the ball. Or if you run safeties in the box, you might want to have a mid zone KO. If you got guys, uh, if your safeties are constantly playing over the middle of the field, stuff like that. Other than that, pretty much a lot of these things I already mentioned. If you run a lot of man coverage, you can run a deep route KO. This would be like cover one or cover zero where the safeties are a man a lot uh lumberjack is still pretty good with the cut stick ability uh lurker if you're using one of these safeties uh, when it comes to um you know over the middle of the field in, in the box it's going to be very good film study i already mentioned uh but a lot of these are, are just repeats at this point uh as you know pick artists i mentioned all these as they're all really good there's nothing really new uh as we've gone through just about every single ability so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this i'll have some more cfm tip videos popping up on screen so just click the links and until next time thanks for watching man my shout out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below